general layout of what happens to a man when he engages in porn over an extended period of time. We'll talk a little bit about these steps more in the next slides, but essentially it's escalation due to tolerance. So they start using more and more bizarre genres of porn, harder core porn, to get the release of dopamine, as we'll talk about later. You develop a decreased penile sensitivity. As Dr. Kramer, who's a urologist, mentioned, a penile, I'm uh, sorry, a brain penis mismatch. So even though you are able to have an erection, if you're one of the lucky ones, you do not find, you do not have as much pleasure as as you would have because of the, the brain penile mismatch, because it's just not that interesting. Because you're engaged in something that's a super stimulus, something that a normal person or what we've been evolved to, to see or what we've been created to do becomes very boring. Then you get delayed ejaculation, leading to anorgasm, inability to orgasm. Again, it's porn more exciting than a real person. Uh, here it's uh, must fantasize the porn to, 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 uh, to, to continue an erection. Decreased uh, morning erections. No reaction even with porn. And this is devastating. This is what brings them in crime. This is, and they don't even, and sometimes they don't even know what's going on. They haven't even put two and two together. So what's going on? Now, this is a slide taken from Gary Wilson. Gary Wilson, you'll see several slides that I use from Gary Wilson. He's a professor of anatomy and physiology, does a lot of work in porn-induced erectile dysfunction. He is a boss, and I, I give a link to his webpage. It's called yourbrainonporn.com, an excellent resource and an excellent presentation that he does. Now, so the strength of the nerve signal is important, as well as the neurotransmitters, as well as the receptors. Now here is the limbic system, and part of the limbic system that we're going to talk about is the reward center. So this area in the middle of your brain, it's also known kind of as the old brain, the reward center, the seeking center. This is going to be our simplified brain, mid-sagittal uh, mid section of the brain, looking at the prefrontal cortex. This red dot is the nu nucleus accumbens. This is the VTA, the ventral tegmental area in the hypothalamus. Now there, in the ventral tegmental area of the hypothalamus is uh, erection centers, erection nerves. So this area uh, is very, very important. So, so here we come here. So from other areas of the brain, like sight, sound, smell, emotion, sensation, and memories, they bombard the nucleus accumbens. And then it goes to the ventral tegmental area, and then it goes down to the penis. Now, not, that's, that's the sexual response. As you look at these pictures, these are certain things that trigger the limbic system, trigger, trigger the reward center of the brain. How, so for example, sex, food, bonding, taking risks, shock, anxiety, and achievement, all are activities that bombard or that, that, that trigger our reward center in our brain. Again, the driver of the, of the reward center, the key hormone that, or the neurotransmitter that we need to keep in mind is dopamine. Now, what is dopamine? I gotta have X, I gotta have it now, whatever X is. Craving, seeking, seeking, wanting, anticipation. This is really what dopamine is about. It's not so much about uh, pleasure as it is craving, seeking, wanting, anticipation. And the limbic system, as we just talked about. Now, there is no other stimulus, natural stimulus, that drives dopamine response as sex does. Sex, by far, drives the dopamine response more than any other activity. Again, this is dopamine in erections. Now, you can imagine that dopamine is going to be very important in this process. Again, so again, you have the nucleus accumbens has connections to the prefrontal cortex. And we'll see why that's extremely important. That is very, very important. And then you'll see that it has connections to the VTA, the hypothalamus, the ventral tegmental area, and it goes down to the penis. So again, we have an abnormality, we have an issue with dopamine. And what's the issue? We have a lower response. We're going to come to why that is in a minute. Now, anything that promotes our survival, anything that that's important for us to survive, activates 
the limbic system, activates the reward center, floods it with dopamine. Unfortunately, certain drugs and certain addictive behaviors activate the same pathways. And this is what's so scary. As you know, alcohol, cocaine, heroin, meth, nicotine, all activate the exact same pathways as pornography does. It kind of, these basically what they're doing is they're hijacking these, these uh, substances, drugs and pornography and addictive su uh, behaviors and substance, substances, hijack it and produce this bombard the system with dopamine without necessarily going through the, the natural way, the way that we either were created to do or evolved to do. So sex itself has its own, if you look at the yellow part right here, this is a certain set of pathways and nerves this, that sex as well as meth and drugs will stimulate this, this part, these pathways. Whereas other activities that, that like playing golf, bonding with your family, eating good food, yes, it releases dopamine, but not to the same extent and not to any abnormal way. It doesn't, uh, 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 it doesn't cause as much a dopamine release. According to the American Society of Addictive Medicine, Addiction is one phenomenon. And again, how do we know someone is addicted? Continual use despite the consequences. No matter, I'm having a poor relationship with my significant other, I'm looking at pornography at work, I've got fired from my job because of pornography doom, I'm still using it. I feel, I have no, I can't, I'm confused, I can't stop. I'm basically just completely helpless. No control, compulsion. I feel like I have to. And this intense craving. Those are the four C's of addiction. Doesn't that sound like heroin? Doesn't that sound like cocaine? Does that sound like alcohol addiction? Some people argue that a lot of things raise dopamine. Why are you making a big deal? I think there's a big difference between taking your dog out for a walk and enjoying a sunset and watching pornography. Again, this concept of a super stimulus and dopamine in the internet, again, this unlimited novelty. The idea that you have so many different genres, all at the click of a mouse, endless, searching and seeking, waiting for that perfect clip, waiting for that perfect picture, waiting for that perfect movie or your, or your favorite porn star, all leads to shot uh, uh, to squirts of dopamine, shots to the higher levels of dopamine. And as we know, you may say, well, how do you progress into the bizarre type? Like, you know, the, uh, you know something you never think you would do. The idea is if you combine shock, surprise, uh, fear, when you, as we know in brain science, this will increase your dopamine response. Porn overrides our, set, our satiation mechanisms. Now, what does that mean? There's a concept that many men that many men do is called edging. So what they do is basically they watch porn, and right before they orgasm, they stop. Then they go to another genre. They keep doing this for hours on hours on end. And this is soaking. This is this is a, a situation where you have high levels of dopamine at a very long period of time, which is not meant to be. They keep those high levels of dopamine. So what happens when the body is exposed to a lot of dopamine? We downregulate, and we'll talk about it. You'll have downregulation of receptors, downregulation of dopamine, and, there, and the idea of tolerance. And it taxes libido. Now, another interesting thing about porn is there is no limit. There's no limit to porn. Like if I drink a lot of alcohol, I'll pass out and fall onto the stage. I can sit up hours and hours and hours watching porn. There's really essentially no limits to the amount of pornography you can consume.